Welcome to the Sister Speak Show. You are listening to the Vent Session on the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana, but you better call me Sister Speak. What's happening? How y'all feeling? And how are y'all doing? It's 9.31 p.m. I'm recording from Dallas, Texas. The weather is perfect. And this episode, (laughs) I know why you're tuning in, but let's get the formalities in and out, shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay, brothers and sisters, welcome to my first-time listeners. Welcome to my faithful listeners, to my first-time listeners. The Sister Speech Show Network is rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. That's the first and last warning. Yeah, it's that type of network, and it's definitely that type of episode. You're going to need two things. You're going to need water, and you're going to need scuba gear. Why do you need all of that? Okay, check this in. Water, because that's your gasoline. How you going to go without gas? It's reflective power. It's healing power. And then you're going to need scuba gear because we dive to levels and depths that are necessary for the village. Some of you are wondering, where's the background music? What's happening, Sister Speak? Like, what's going on? Where's the music? Oh, it's coming. It is coming. But I had to get this in and out, as I forementioned, so we can flow with the episode. It is by divine appointment that you're listening. Be prepared to leave encouraged and empowered. I want you to understand that the vent session is for you. It is for me. How so? For those who are listening for the first time, the vent session is for the people in this world, all shades of brown people, who are light workers, the chosen ones, the children of the Most High God, and you are in spiritual warfare, and you're in the season where your enemies got you fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's what the vent session is about. The vent session is about reclaiming your power, establishing boundaries, expecting respect, giving yourself respect. It is about getting it out and not holding it in. See, I get it. I get it. I'm qualified to be on this microphone. I get it. And. Since I get it, and I'm a warrior, there's no way, shape, or form I'm going to let my brothers and sisters who have been predestined to listen to this episode or any other walk away feeling defeated. That's not the objective of any episode. So check this in. The warfare that you're in, it comes with many levels. And the vent session is designed For that conversation that you keep on having in the car with yourself. There's nobody in the car that you can see. But it's a real conversation because they've got you fucked up. You've had it. The vent session is for those who need to talk, but you don't trust anybody around you to talk about it. Because in your eyes, everybody is with the shit. (laughs) Fuckery is their PhD. And you've had it. And you need a safe place where we can expose and encourage. That's the vent session. We're going to tell it like a TI is and keep it 100. There's no way, shape, or form that we're not. Who am I? Once again, I am Sister Speak. Now, like I said, the formalities. Because when we flow, we're going to flow. We're already flowing. Check this in. To those of you who listen to any episode of the Sister Speak show and you're a hater. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me actually describe the hate that we are aware of concerning you and your energy, your skeletor. 
we will refer to you as that. You are a wart monger. We will refer to you as that. Hagatha. We'll refer to you as that. Azrael and Gargamel. Mm -hmm. And we will also call you niggas when we need to. That's how we get in and down and around and over on the Sister Speaks show. What? I didn't forget. In lily pads. We will call you lily pads. In totality, all those names that I just mentioned, you don't want to see the forward progressive movement for the village. You want to stay a nigga. You want to be low vibrating. You choose to take the garbage out of the garbage can and throw it into the village. No. And then you get mad when we pick up litter and we put it in its proper place. You don't like solutions. You only like pollution. And you don't want anybody to vibrate high. And, and, and truth be told, you really work for the enemy. You're a dark agent. And so what we do over here is we definitely return to sender. We play no games. When it comes to the Sister Speak show, if you don't like anything that I say, I don't give a fuck. And that's just how that is. I'm on an assignment. If you're listening to imitate, okay, unrighteously, if you're listening to steal any type of content or anything without giving at least some type of... Look, if you're here to be a hater, as I forementioned... Or any of those other names. And you're coming to steal content or be disrespectful or any of those other type of things. <laughs> That's on you, baby. That's on you. Okay, without further ado, brothers and sisters. Now that I've got that in another way, I want to once again welcome you. Let's drink our water because you know how we start off the show. Uh-oh, wait a minute now. Okay, here we go. Get this water. I don't play games. Joy, we don't say cheers anymore, we say joy. And shout out once again to everybody listening from all over the world. I thank you for your downloads. I thank you for your, you know, sharing with other people about the Sister Speak show. I am specifically designed for specific people, for specific brothers and for specific sisters. Period, point blank. Without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Here we go. This playlist is for free use. All music is for entertainment purposes, only fair use. Mm -hmm. This is the karaoke rendition throughout the entire playlist. Let's get into it. Tonight's episode on the Vent Session. Stop playing games with me. Cheating leaves crumbs. Secret. Phone and online lives. A special episode on the vent session. We're not going to talk about anything else but this. Uh-huh, you tuned in because <laughs> you've been here before. You Let me turn this music down, goodness. You've been here before. The shit was real. You've been in a relationship with someone or someone's. And the betrayal happened. They weren't loyal. They were sneaking around. They played games with you. They had you fucked up. But, 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 oh, no, no, no. In totality, we're going to talk about tonight everybody's contribution to the relationships. We're going to talk about the effects and how you're going to have to not let this be kryptonite to your swag and to your journey. And we're going to also have to properly assign the right titles to these relationships. Oh, you say that it's complicated. Some of you say, well, you know, I really don't want to talk about it. Some of you are an open book about everything that's going on. Because when cheating hits the fan, oh, shit. 
there's crumbs. And that's how you get caught. It's the crumbs, my sister. It's the crumbs, my brother. Did you see him or her walking in the rain? Were they holding hands? What do you mean you'll never be the same? Mm. Relationships are serious. And if you are not ready to be in one, it's only a matter of time before something goes left. It's inevitable. It's not hate. It's just fate. Because anything that's out of order will dysfunction, including him or her. If the energy is low, what else do you expect but low vibrating events, circumstances, and fuckery? You thought you were exclusive. Well, that's what they told you. And you believed them. Why shouldn't you? Saw the red flags, didn't you? Mm. Those red flags are serious, aren't they? But because that unhealed trauma is just marinating inside of you, you're just going to be pretend like you're Stevie Wonder. Yeah, you're going to be blind to the fact. Phone turned over. Ah. Uh. See, I'll always sneaking off having these private conversations. Who the fuck are you texting? Who was that? That didn't sound like your mama. Your sister? I didn't even know you had one. Your brother? On your daddy's side? <laughs> Cause I, who? Who are you talking to? What's really going on? Oh, I'm tripping. Oh, no, no, it ain't, uh, no, no, it's, it's me? Oh, I'm insecure. Or could it just be that everything around you is loose and there's no way there could ever be any security because you're insecure and you're projecting? Yeah, getting in a relationship with people that you think you know and you have no idea who this person is. And when somebody tells you that it's just you and me, excuse me, you and I in a relationship and it turns out to be that it's you, me, she, him, them and and a whole bunch of sin. Well, shit, that's the crumbs from cheating. See, the thing about it is, oh, you know what? This is what we going to come on, sister, speak, say it, say it, say it. No, 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 no. Hold up. Hold up. Check this in. You've heard it all before, haven't you? He did tell you, let me explain. It ain't, it ain't what you see, even though your eyes work just fine. It isn't what you hear, even though you hear well. It isn't what you discern, even though the Lord told you that this right here is dangerous. And this person right here is not meant for you. I didn't send him your way. Well, if you didn't send him, then who did? Cheating leads to death. It goes that far because some people can't handle the bullshit, the fuckery. Some people don't bounce back from the the, from the total devastation. They're not able to rise from the ashes because they're not equipped to handle the energies that are being thrown at them at a swift in a swift manner. Being cheated on. Used in its proper context is the emotions that birth from that are warranted. But like I said, if we assign things in its proper place, then maybe we will understand exactly why things are happening the way they happen. Some of you are going to probably want to click off now, and let me explain to you why. Let me pause this. Some of you are going to want to click off because I'm going to keep it one fucking hundred right now. And some of you are ready to hear this shit. Some of you are ready to stay low vibrating. Some of you are ready to play with people's minds, are still trying to play with people's minds, their hearts and their souls. Some of you think this shit is a game. You really do. 
You think that it is okay to fuck around with people's minds, hearts, and souls. You do think it's okay to create illusions through manipulation, deception, chaos, confusion. You are an agent of darkness and you don't represent anything. Any type of enlightenment. Everything you do is by the moon. Secrets. Darkness. Creeping. Crawling. Ain't nothing good about what you do. You don't get rest. You're always looking over your shoulder. And then some of you have gotten so comfortable that any day now your whole shit is going to be bust wide open. Because it's your due justice. It's, it's time for you to be called out of your low vibrating fuckery because you play too many games with people. And you're going to meet the right one, not the wrong one, the right one. And everything that you've done is going to come back on you a hundredfold. When you play games with people, When you lead people on, when you tell them that it is this, when it is really that, what the fuck do you expect? We all know what it is to be with someone and have them be an illusion, masquerade. Put you in danger, some of us. Physically, spiritually, in danger. And we have to go through these specific trials and tribulations to learn about ourselves and why we are attracting these energies. Learning not to blame shift, but identify so we are able to make better decisions when it comes to who we are dealing with. Most of us don't even know who the fuck we are. But you feel like you're ready to love. You feel like you got to have you somebody right now. You don't want to be alone. So you accept a lot of shit. My question is, why? I mean, I'm just saying, why? Is it the tolerance for pain? Think about these things. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You just took playing That's My Car to a whole nother level. The latest episode of the Tour on the Sister Speak show is available on demand now. Rated R for strong content, language, and thoughts on this episode. Jacking for more than beats. The effects of GTA and rap music. Confessing to crimes over beats. Lyrics leading to arrest. On the tour, we're covering all aspects of the music industry, including interviews with musicians, managers, songwriters, producers, music groups, DJs, and exclusive music and concert reviews. Either you're playing the video game or the video game is playing you. Click the link for the latest episode on the Sister Speak Show with contemporary needs, vision, sound, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Be careful. When it comes to being a rap lyricist, what sets you apart is your ability to be able to freestyle on demand. If you can't freestyle, you can't rap. The latest episode of the tour on the Sister Speak Show is available on demand now. In this episode, Beatdowns versus Bars, when freestyle battles 
turn violent. Rated R for strong content and language. On the tour, we cover all aspects of the music industry, focusing on musicians, managers, songwriters, producers, music groups, DJs, with exclusive music, as well as concert reviews and IG Live concerts and interviews. On the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Go ahead and click the link for the latest episode. What's happening? You are listening to the Vince Session on the Sister Speak Show. I'm your host, Sister Speak. Brothers and sisters, tonight's episode is serious. What you thought I was going to come and like pussyfoot around the topic? No, we're going to get into it. This is real life shit happening right now. Right now, somebody is (laughs) believing one thing and something else is happening. Somebody is cheating. It's happening all over the place. All over the place. And the thing about it is... It's a blessing to find out that they are. How so? Excuse me? Wrong show. Listen. At some point, sis. At some point, brother. You are going to have to be by yourself. And you keep forcing yourself into relationships that are not for you. But since you're here, get this work. Get this lesson. So you can be a better human and vibrate higher. I can't find no good man. Where the good men at? I mean, this is like ridiculous. Like, I'm so tired because they're hiding. They're hiding. That's why. They don't want you. <gasps> what? I thought this was the Sister Speak show. I thought you was for... Listen, ooh, no. Wait a minute. This is the Sister Speak show, but you need to understand something. They're hiding from you. You're not ready. Why should a good man want to be with a woman who's not ready? If he's a good man, he has good sense. <laughs> you better get into it today. I I know the world has you thinking time is ticking and you're running out of time. Now, if you operate according to the way the world operates and on that vibration, then of course, you're going to have anxiety up the yin yang. But when you're not of this world and you understand that you serve the super ruler, you have to think differently. There's an order to this process so it can last. That's the goal, isn't it, of any relationship for it to last? Do you want it to last based on bullshit and lies and deception and diseases and um, children born outside of the relationship? Are these the things that you're okay with settling for? Cheating leaves crumbs. And people are getting caught daily. They're hiding. Just like good women are hiding. The Lord is protecting us. There's only so many times. So many times. That you can continue. To put yourself in a position to lose. You see the crumbs. There's not a person listening to this show who does not know what crumbs are. Evidence that somebody was eating. Whether it be chips, cookies, whatever it is, cupcakes, whatever crumbs. They didn't all all of it didn't make it in their mouth. (laughs) It was some slippage. Hole in the lip. What if they, they need a bib. That's the clue right there. <laughs> Crumbs, bib, baby, bullshit, toddler, uh, not ready to love. Listen to me. 
listen to me. We all know what crumbs are, the evidence of eating. And as a result of that, cheating leaves crumbs, evidence of cheating, evidence of opposite. It's like cheating is like opposite day every day. Remember when you were in school, it's like, okay, it's spirit week, everybody show your spirit. It's opposite day on Wednesday. It's twin day and all that other BS, right? And so opposite day came and it was just opposite day. Whatever opposite was, it's just not. It's, if it's raining, it's really sunshine. You know, just fuckery, like mind tricks. So listen. You caught them cheating. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. This shit you see in the phone ain't nothing like what he told you was really going on. You were so comfortable with him that you didn't even feel a need to check his phone. He was that good. I mean, con artist of the year. And... All the while, this whole secret life is happening in this phone. Smartphone, dumb nigga. And here you are starting to notice little shit because he moving differently. Because what you niggas don't really understand is some of you, you move differently. You think you're a player, but you're moving differently. And we see it because we see We pay attention to detail, like our eyes are on it. Okay? So you moving differently. Suspect. Because you know that what you said isn't what you're really doing. You're a liar. In this season, yes. Yes. And you walk around stabbing people in the back. You're not true. And you created a whole script, fiction, definitely wasn't nonfiction, but it is definitely a biography about you. And you have taken the time to waste oxygen to create an illusion so you can get away with being a fuckboy. Hey, don't know what else to call you. I got to call you what I what it what it is that you are. If it's a lion, I'm not going to say it's an elephant. You are listening to the sister speech show. This is real shit. I'm not going to call you anything else than what you are at the time that you are it. If it's a car thief, we're not going to say he's a doctor. Now, if it's a doctor, that's a car thief. then Shit. Shut down your practice and get to hustling. Psych. Listen to what I'm saying. You're a fuck boy. No, listen, the door is locked. The women ain't leaving the room. We're going to cover all aspects, but we're going to talk about the fuck boy for this moment. You do fuck shit. That makes you a fuck boy. And you do fuckery. I mean, look at it. This is what you wanted, right? You wanted to put yourself in a position to where you're breaking hearts, breaking trust, and putting putting, you know, women in a position where they they don't know which way is up or which way is down. Some women don't want to eat it. I mean, like the depression is setting in because they are devastated because they had sex with you. They fornicated with you. Y'all fornicated, exchanged those energies. And so this is this connection is deeper than just what it looks like. This is this is a lot of shit going on now. And you, Mr. Um octopus penis are spreading yourself around the community and abroad because you feel like your penis needs to be shared with everybody and that everybody needs to get a taste of you what the fuck is so special about you because it seems to me that your dick is on clearance huh cheating leaves crumbs and it also leaves unwanted pregnancies stds These are the crumbs, but you want to let everybody know that your dick is on clearance and that anybody can get it. You have no type of security at all for your genitalia. You don't give a fuck about your penis, Mr. Raw Dog.
Think about this shit. Do you even have a place to stay? Because you can only go from home to home to home to home doing the bullshit. And I know you keep hearing this. I'm tired of your sorry ass. Shit, nigga. How long are you going to be called sorry ass? You're not ready to be in a relationship. You don't need a girlfriend or a wife. You're not ready. You're damaged. You're either damaged bads or you're damaged goods. You're going to make that decision. It's going to be based on whether or not you decide to take yourself out of the fuckery or stay in it. But you traveling all around town, leaving a trail of karma for your ass. And you going to roll up on the wrong right one. And she going to take you on a ride. For real, for real. She going to teach you all about being a dog ass nigga. That is your curriculum. You deserve it. Nothing else will work for you. I need you to stop cheating on me. And I just wish that we could work it out. And, you know, I just, I love you so much. And I know, baby, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to be true this time. I'm sorry. I just, you know, all that bullshit. And you, you back at it again. Back at it again, 8 a.m. in the morning. No, your job is being clearance penis all around town. You don't do shit, but just devastate not only yourself, but other people. Cheating leaves crumbs. And if you are married and you are cheating, shit, let's get into it. I do have some clips tonight. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save it. Oh, wait a minute, sister speak. Wait, no, no, please, please. I was married. I was married. I need you to talk about it. My husband left me. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know if you know it or not, but I'm in this thing. I got you. I got everybody. We're going to converse about this thing. I'm talking that shit. And you love it. The first thing you, when you saw Cheating Leaves Crumb, you're like, oh, I'm listening to that shit. I'm going to download that shit. I, I'm going to download that, that shit. I'm, a, I'm definitely going to listen to that because, you know, yeah, cheating. First thing you saw is cheating. I'm in it. Yep, cheating. Listen, download. Down. <laughs> I already know. And you know what? I've been sitting on this episode for damn near a week and a half now. Gathering the energy. This is gasolina. Muy caliente. So I had to make sure that I was charged at 1,000% for this. I got you. My goodness. I I know y'all keep hearing. I don't know if y'all keep hearing that. That's my um, support for my back. And it keeps on when I lean forward because, you know, I'm all in this conversation. (laughs) I'm all into this episode. (laughs) Every episode. When I lean forward, it leans forward with me. And then when I lean back, it claps on the wall. (laughs) Shit. <laughs> but listen, brothers and sisters, um, are you a snake? Because, you know, when I see a snake, I say snake. So I know some of you right now like, damn, she called me a fuck boy. Well, at least you know it's you. <laughs> at least you know it's you, sisters. I know. I see you. Get them, girl. Go ahead, sister. Speak. Let these niggas know. Let them know what about you? I will. (laughs) Wait a minute. I thought you was. No, no. For all shades of brown people, when I introduce my show, you hear me say, hey, brothers and sisters. Because brothers and sisters listen to the Sister Speak show. I, I have it set up like that. We are not bashing. We're identifying. That's what that is. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about everything. Cheating leaves crumbs. We're going to talk about your secret fucking phone lives. We're going to talk about your gallery. 
We're going to talk about your secret photos, your secret emails, why you won't change your email address. We're going to talk about why you won't block. We're going to talk about why you won't go no contact and leave the door open for all your exes. We're going to talk about why you keep running back to all your old ass exes. We're going to talk about these things. We're going to ask why some of you are still staying stuck in the past, won't allow a time of stillness and silence to be your best friend so you can come out of this low vibrating energy so you can really have love. The next time I get into a divine relationship, well, I've never been in a divine relationship before. Well, it was orchestrated by the divine for me to learn that I want to have a divine relationship. Look at me having a, <laughs> these are the conversations you be having. I'm serious. When I do, bro, I've, I've learned a lot. And I'm just telling you, like, things will not ever be how they were because I'm doing the work. And I'm going to attract somebody else who's doing the work. It's imperative. It Nothing will work until you do the work. And it's. For some people, a horse pill, and for other people, it's like, okay, I can swallow a pill whole. For real, for real. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to these clips that are for educational purposes only, for fair use, to raise awareness about the importance of monogamy, celibacy, proper human communication, being able to build a solidarity based on loyalty, being able to be a brother and sister of your word, and being able to handle people with care because we are to be kind to one another, not be in chaos. So these clips are definitely for educational purposes only under the Fair Use Act, okay? Let's get into it. And I'll see you on the other side of these clips. You're a wonderful listening audience, and I thank you for appreciating me and my energy and allowing me to share with you. Podcasting is my calling. And you are divinely protected. Let's go. Shout out to Mont Music, to KK Lachey, to Ali Frank Music, to MYHM, my brother. I appreciate you all.
last quick question, a little bit off topic, but so much online yeah. dating. So a couple tips. You, you finally meet somebody face to face that you met on a uh, match site. What's your playbook look like? What should you do? First of all, safety. <laughs> safety yeah. is number one. That's real because you meet people online. You just don't know who exactly you're meeting. So you always want to make sure that you're safe. It is someone you're comfortable right. around. Um, don't put yourself in comfortable in compromising situations. Um, but also, too, just live your best life. You know, we have all of these new social media and online dating tools. Use them to, your, to the best of your ability because people are not always finding people at the grocery store anymore. You know, walking, not too many people are approached. And more and more lasting relationships Absolutely. started on the internet. Online. I have a lot of couples who met online, and they are definitely working it out. signs your partner as a Facebook cheater, the most Facebook cheating signs your partner as hiding from you. Cheating can take on all forms, sexual infidelity, financial cheating, emotional affairs. But nothing makes things easier than technology. Cheaters have gone high tech. When their behavior shifts, you have to pay attention. Sign 1, they always log out of Facebook. We all spend a lot of time online. Technology is now a part of our culture and daily lives. Because of that, it's rare that we consciously log out of social media sites and services. Maybe you will on a shared computer, but not on a private phone. If they are randomly logging out of Facebook, perhaps they are careful with privacy, or they are hiding something. Sign 2, they jump on their phone first thing in the morning, usually in private or in the bathroom. Because we are all so connected, it's unfortunately not unusual that people sleep with their phone nearby, perhaps tracking sleep patterns, or they fall asleep to meditation or music, and many reach for their phones first thing in the morning. However, Facebook cheaters might grab their phones first thing and disappear to the bathroom. Or they are on their phone when you wake up, and they quickly put it away, or switch applications. Sign 3, they are highly possessive of their phone. Lots of activity on their phone and online, but they never really have anything to say about what they are reading, writing, doing, or texting. When they are online, they are beyond distracted. When they are off their phone, finally, it's either placed face down right next to them, or it's in their hand or possession. And if you even glance at it, they will either get a weird guilt look on their face, or immediately ask you, what? What's the problem? Sign for, lots of new friends, and new likes and comments. We all have friends online who we don't really know very well, and many times have never met in person. As such, it's unlikely we would know all of our partner's Facebook friends, to include co-workers, colleagues, college friends, etc. However, when lots of comments and likes start coming in from someone new, and usually just one person, it's a red flag. If you start reading little quips and inside jokes on their wall and you have no idea what they are talking about, something is amiss. Sign 5, instantly defensive and ready to fight. As with most cheaters, people who use Facebook for illicit affairs are ready to defend themselves, and perhaps even blame you for acting weird, disconnected, and whatever they deem as suspicious behavior. If you question any of their activities or behavior, they will likely shift the blame, manipulate the conversation, deflect your accusations, get angry and defensive, or leave. While these signs aren't a 100% foolproof way of detecting if your partner is Facebook cheating, they are sure signs that something serious is off in your relationship. Bottom line, follow your gut instincts. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button, and leave a comment below this video to let me know what you would like to see next, and what type of videos you want me to create for you. If you have any... We're all on it. There are more than a billion daily users on Facebook alone, and many of us Social media could be hurting your relationship more than you think. It's a report by our own Josh Hellman that you're only going to see here on KRPO. According to the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, 81% of attorneys have used social media as evidence during divorce cases. So we asked you, North you from Southern Colorado, does social media ever negatively impact your relationship? The results were overwhelming. I've watched the ruin many. Emotional cheating, the same as physical. Yes, definitely. Rhonda says, my husband hates when I'm on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. Philip says it played a notable role in the 
downfall of his. So, all these comments, just a microcosm of the epidemic that is tying social media and divorce. Yeah, I mean, social media is used as a tool to, to cheat. Lisa Hall is a licensed marriage and family therapist in Louisville. She sees clients dealing with social media and infidelity constantly. I would say things have really accelerated in the last five years. And because we have social media on our cell phones in the palm of our hands at all times, it's made cheating extremely easier. I think when you feel that you don't want to share something with your partner or you're afraid they might see it, that's a sign that you need to be careful. In fact, if you don't ever have access to your partner's phone, that overprotectedness could be a red flag. Yeah, we see that all the time. I mean, that's what... That's going to cause divorces. That's going to cause breakups. Todd Burnham is a divorce attorney here in the Springs who has seen the same social cheating trend over the last decade. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to find people that are on Facebook, for instance, who reconnect with the college girlfriend or boyfriend. And depending on the situation that they're in in their lives, they think that those former glory days were when you were at your best self. And not only does social media cheating hurt your spouse, school. We met in college. Um, we met in class. And you really didn't like me. No, I didn't like you at first. A couple years later, we moved into like the same apartment complex. And the first day we both moved there, we like met on the elevator again. It was like a reunion. And then you offered to bring my groceries upstairs. And um, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. say that you were my best friend. Yeah. Me too. So I'd go through his phone. I would like see text messages 
your like pictures of girls and then I would ask him about it and sometimes he would lie and just say like oh that's not true you don't know what you're talking about and he said like oh I'll stop but then he said one kind of a point where things weren't the same right. just like you would always go through my phone or my computer yeah i don't trust you if you would go to that measure to i don't to find whatever why why wouldn't you just Sometimes we're we're just we're not on the same page. Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> There's nothing that you could have done differently that I think would have prevented it. I think that you did everything that you needed to do to be a good girlfriend, and I was lucky to have someone like you. You're a bad guy because he cheated. I, I forgave you. Why? Because we were best friends.
There won't be any more warnings. That's why your heart is beating fast. He's out there again. You can see him from the stage. He's obsessed with you. That's why he's taking your pictures. You're his fantasy. The latest episode of The Suspense Files on The Sister Speak Show is available on demand now. Rated R for strong content, language, and thoughts on this episode. Fantasies and felonies. Strip club killers. On The Suspense Files, we cover the who, what, when, where, why, and urban crime, including crimes of passion, deadly relationships, mysteries, urban cold cases, and more. Click the link for the latest episode of The Sister Speak Show where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Be careful. Try not to fall in love with a stripper. There are some gender reveals that reveal more than just the gender. They can reveal the agenda of a predator. The latest episode of The Suspense Files is available on demand now. The insanity that rocks the cradle. The pregnancy predator. On The Suspense Files, we're covering the who, what, when, where, why, in urban crime, including crimes of passion, deadly relationships, mysteries, urban cold cases, and more. Click the link in the bio for the latest episode. On the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. Rated R for strong content, thoughts, and ideas. Welcome back. You are listening to the Vent Session on the Sister Speak Show. I'm your host, Sister Speak. It's 10.28 p.m. Central Standard Time, recording live, well, (laughs) on demand, really, from Dallas, Texas. Brothers and sisters, Mm -hmm. those clips were created in order for a reason. And that last clip specifically, I know you all got to listen And it had whatever effect it had on you. But it's time to continue where I left off. Oh, sister speak, I remember where you left off at. Because remember you was talking about all the men and you was about to say something about the husbands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you left off at. at. Well, thank you, LaVita. (laughs) I appreciate you. I, I know where I left off at. But now that we have gotten the... That part of the content out of the way. Let's get into this. Walking in the rain. First of all, if you see some, if you see your man and another woman walking in the rain, he really don't give a shit about her or himself because they walking in the rain. You'll get it. You'll get it one day. You'll get it. I don't even think like that. I know because you were devastated that this nigga lied to you. I know. I know. Oh, I like it when you talk like that. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) But listen, let's get into this. So anyways, when it comes to you being a married man stepping out of the house with a secret phone life, a secret online life, where do you think? This is going to get you. And why are you willing to risk cheating, knowing that crumbs will be left when you are supposed to be with this woman? I'm talking about somebody who you were divinely appointed to and connected with and you step outside. You're going to be made to leave crumbs you are going to be caught it is you will be caught and you're going to determine how it ends you will because it's usually when you get caught that you're sorry and you're correct you are sorry sorry as shit because 
this isn't an apology. I'm sorry, baby, baby. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never do that. Nah, nah, nah. Because if I hadn't caught you, brother, if I hadn't stepped on this crumb, also known as this panties, found these panties, these crumbs, or seen this picture, or caught a text message, or however I caught the crumb, you would have been still out doing your thing. Because you enjoy the thrill of the deceit, the manipulation, the betrayal. That's your heroin, your meth, your fentanyl. This is your daily drug to lead people into destruction because not only does your secret online and phone life devastate yourself I know you don't give a fuck, but it does devastate your family. It devastates the community, depending on your status. Levels in cheating. The bigger the status, the the bigger the exposure when the crumbs are discovered. And some of you, as a result of your crumbs, are having to pay every month for the cleaning service for your crumbs. Uh Uh-huh. She is going to wipe you out. That is the, almost like the collateral damage when it comes to the marital aspects of stop playing games with me. They took you back one time because you said you wouldn't do it before. You wouldn't, excuse me, you wouldn't do it again. You made that oath, that vow, that promise that, baby, I've changed. I'm going to do things differently. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be low vibrating. I'm going to church with you. Whatever your whole I've had a two minute epiphany bullshit ass script was, you said it because in that in that sparkle of a second, you had a an awakening But the stronghold is so serious and the vibration is so low that it's going to suck you right back into that same succubus energy and incubus energy. And you have a Jezebel spirit on you, brother, on me, on you. What Jezebel is a female spirit and your energies are unbalanced. So you have a whoremonger spirit on you. Either way, you out there and you stick your penis in lava every time you cheat on your wife. Fuck boy. You risk everything just to cheat. You don't give a fuck. And you spend money to promote your dysfunction. And you're all over the place. You're tired. You're weak. And you're putrid. Because that demon in you is deceptive. And you're mean as fuck to your wife. And you're sweet as shit to your mistresses and your misters. Mm -hmm. Some of you leave same sex crumbs. (laughs) You thought we would, you didn't think, you know, we're going to cover it, right? Okay. You leave the crumbs. Mean as fuck to your wife and sweet as shit to your mistresses. You can't make that make sense. There's no way, but you do it and you know who you are. Your wife, looking in her eyes, you can see the damage, but you don't give a fuck because you think you the shit. And you are, but you need to put peace of in front of it. Unflushable, you're a clog in a toilet. Sewer system is what you are. 
and you put your wives in perilous positions because some wives have been murdered by mistresses and you started that shit. That's your fault. You started it. You and that thing you're with. Well, sister speak, you know, some some women don't know that the man is married. I know. And moving forward. He knows too. He knows. He knows. I don't give a fuck about what they don't know. Let's move the let's move them out of the way and just say at the beginning of the day, the husband knows he's a husband. So what do you say to that? Yeah, I ain't the one. So you know you're married. And my question is, why the fuck did you even pursue your wife if you weren't ready to commit? Why would you waste these years being deceptive, just leaving crumbs and giving your wife crumbs? But you give the mistress the loaf. You can't make it make sense. And you give the mistress the power to taunt and to tease the wife. You almost disarm your wife and leave her susceptible to the violence, both spiritually and physically and emotionally. But you don't give a fuck because you weren't really her protector to begin with. You were just her deceptor. This marriage was convenient for you. It wasn't love on your behalf, but you led her to believe that it was. And your secret life on the phone is who you really are. Your secret life online and in your emails and in your photo gallery, that's who you currently are. And you believe that you're going to receive receive several sunny days spiritually, don't you? Oh, you know, my wife, you know, what she don't know won't hurt her. Cold, callous, con artist. Evil, low vibrating entity. Demonic, diabolical, demon. You, until you fucking change. And you deserve every fucking dark day that you experience until you stop being an adulterer. That's the real word. Well, what are you saying, Sister Speak? Well, listen to me now. In this real world that I live in, where I'm not finna call an elephant a tiger... You're either single or married. Throw the boyfriend, girlfriend shit out of the window and deal with shit in reality. So that way you won't be emotionally swept away by the carnal thoughts of how relationships go in this world. Separate yourself. Don't get caught up. Well, what are you saying? What I just said. Either you're single or you're married. So if you are not married, you're single. (gasps) It's just that fucking simple. And that way, if you step into the reality of what your situation really is, then the emotional devastation that you are actually auditioning for may not come your way. Single or married. Well, I'm married on paper because if I if there is no marriage license, how so? Unless it's common law and you need to be in a state that recognizes common law moving forward. Either you're single or you're married. If you have a boyfriend, you're dealing with boyish things 
If you have a girlfriend, you're dealing with girlish things. So if you're single, how have you ever been cheated on? Wait a minute, sister, speak this. Follow scuba gear. It's not cheating when you're single. It's called betrayal. When you enter into a fellowship with someone, include the fornication in it, and make all these, re- recite all these lines to each other and get yourselves both caught up in illusion. And then at the end of the day, after all the fuckery, oh, it's complicated. It's just, I'm just taking a break. Good. From what? From yourself? Because that's what you need to do. Listen to me. It is, it is adultery when you're married. Cheating when you're married. When you're not and you're single, it is called betrayal. Not being loyal. Deception. You're going to let this world get you caught up and have you thinking the wrong way and have you contemplating committing suicide because you caught the crumbs. Not eating, not sleeping, stalking. Acting crazy, off your rocker, hormones off, chemical imbalance, energy off because of this crumb. Because you put your all into it. You didn't put your all into yourself. You put your all into it. And it is the relationship and him. You fed him before you fed yourself. You showed him that you loved him more than you loved yourself. What did you expect to happen when you show a man that you don't give a fuck about yourself either? I'm willing to do anything for him. Excuse me? You don't super rule. How can you? All things are possible with the most high, not you. Unelevate yourself. As a matter of fact, your elevator needs to get stuck. Stop it. You're trying to put yourself in a position that you're not qualified for. <clears throat> when this man told you that he was not ready to be in relationship, why the fuck didn't you believe him? Sis. Huh? People say hunk in here. Why didn't you believe him? He told you he was not ready To commit. Why are you crying? He told you. Now you're seeing what he said. And you don't know how to handle it. But you said you did. Fast lane ain't for everybody. Think about these things. You're putting your all. Into a lesson. Only. It's not a lifetime. It's a lesson. And at some point, when will you say, I am not going to put myself in something that I have not even been pre-qualified for? You're not even pre-qualified to be in a relationship. So once again, if you say you're not ready to commit, why are you Dealing with these women in a way that makes them feel like you're exclusive. Well, no, I ain't seeing nobody. You know, at this moment, nigga, like, but two seconds later with that secret phone life, you finna do the least, even though you think you're doing the most. So at the beginning of the day, we're not pre-qualified. That's why this shit happens. That's why it blows up. The most high is going to always fuck your shit up. He is. He's going to always put it in a position to where it is destroyed. Because if you are out of order and you are his child and you are continuing to go down this pathway where you're dealing with low vibrational men and women. Oh, yeah. It's only a matter of time. Them crumbs were placed purposefully on purpose. With an intention. 
to get your attention. That's why the crumbs are there to get your attention. To get your attention. I can't believe I caught him. Well, you're the only one surprised because heaven already knew this was coming. He just, I just, yeah, it hurts like shit. The first time I, the first time I experienced a betrayal, yeah, it hurt. And because my energy was low, I wasn't able to deal with it the way I could deal with it now. Okay? I understand, but never again on everything that I believe in. There's no way I would ever miss an ounce of sleep, excuse me, rest, a meal, a moment, genuine love, never again. Don't you ever let anything have that type of effect to where you are literally off your own rocker. I can't live without him. Wait a minute. What did he put in you? Wait a minute now, sis. Wait a minute now, brother. What do do you mean you can't live without him? We don't. Suicidal thoughts let you know that you're not pre-qualified to be in a relationship. Not pre-qualified. What's the point of looking your wife in the eyes and saying those vows, knowing you don't mean that shit? See, you the type of nigga where your wife will get ready for the wedding, you know, want to put her all into this wedding, you know, been dreaming about this wedding, and she's so in love with you. Because you've done a good job being a fucking magician with your abracadabra ass. And she believes that you the one. This is it. True love. Yada, yada, yada. Blase, blase. And then she says, you know what? I feel like we should write our vows and make it even more special. Make just show everybody how we really feel feel about each other. And he looks you in the eyes and he says, All right, Keisha, I got you. And you look at him, you be like, All right, Decorier, that's what's happening. And you write your vows from the depths of your heart. You really mean this shit. Like this is personal. These ain't just any type of words because you you about to do this in front of everybody. And you crying, writing them, and you ain't even got a, you ain't even up there reciting them yet. You already boohooing. And here it is, the day of your wedding, and you stand up there, and it's time. Dun 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 dun. dun. You made it down the aisle, great. Didn't fall, nothing. Everything is flowing, and you get up there, and the preacher says his thing. The courier shows up. Y'all there? Corey and the key and Keisha. I almost said the Keisha. <laughs> and y'all get up there and it's time to say the vows. And and you go first. And you say, I mean, it's poetry. You got everybody in there crying. Everybody like, wow, like well said. Like you, baby, I want you to know, like, the moment that I saw you, I really knew. That this was a connection like none other. And that you were the one that was sent to me. The way you treat me. The way you love me. The way you hold me. The way you make me feel confident. Secure. I appreciate your manhood. Your honesty. Your integrity. Your power. Thank you for finding me. And seeing that I'm your good thing. I thank you for leading me. And for desiring to build an empire with me. Out of everybody in this world that you could have chosen. Because you're a good man. 
You chose me, and I thank you, and I love you, and I am honored to be yours. You say all of that shit. I mean, smooth like butter. Like in there, like swimming. <laughs> like, yeah, that was hot. And the pastor looks at Decorier. Decorier. No, Decorier. And he says, all right, Decorier, it's time for your vows. And this nigga looks you in the eyes and he says, Keisha, you already know what it is. Yeah, that's it. You said all of that poetry. And this nigga looked you in your eyes. In front of your people and his. And said, Keisha, you already know what it is. Damn it. Shit. Woo, stop the live. Blow out the candles. No, close the blind. No, we're closed. No vacancy. Ah, shut the shit down. Did this nigga just say, Keisha, you already know what it is. Red flag. Flag on the play. No, five yard fucking penalty. Third yard down. False start. Let's try this again. Maybe he's nervous. Everybody is looking at this nigga like, did this nigga just say this shit? Your boys, who ain't shit, after a night of all y'all being sluts at the bachelor party, unfaithful as fuck, are like, (laughs) this nigga, (laughs) they laughing and shit. Meanwhile, the bridesmaids are devastated and crying and consoling Keisha because she doesn't fucking know what it already is. What the fuck is it already? And why the fuck did you just say that shit in front of my people? I spent $35,000 for this nigga to lean in and say, Keisha, you already know what it is. It's devastation. It's doom. This shit ain't gonna work. And it's about toying with the emotional compass of the relationship you have me believing that we're balanced but we're not and instead of you putting your energy to do right you're using your energy to do wrong and there are consequences for adultery physically and spiritually emotionally financially and many men married men Excuse me, some married men who do engage in this fuckery have been experiencing karma. And some of you wives think it's just regular, everyday ups and downs. Well, no, this nigga's really getting his just due. This nigga's health is fading, and it's not because of COVID, it's because of COVID. <laughs> This nigga got hovid. <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> Have you had your hovid vaccine? <laughs> You always, you niggas giving females the jab. Nigga, you go get the jab for the coronavirus. Nigga, shit. That one was a classic right there. You niggas better not be stealing my shit because I be hearing my shit get stolen. That shit was a classic right there. You better fucking feel me today. Y'all, I'm going to have to take a commercial. I'm going to have to take a commercial break. Let me tell you why. I need some water. 
I need to finish fucking laughing, and I do not want to keep laughing in this microphone, so I'm going to take a commercial break, and I'm going to be right back, because the COVID virus took me all the way out, and I know it fucking took you out, too. We are going to reclaim our power, brothers and sisters, and we are going to be able, seriously, as I get ready to take this commercial break, because nobody wants to catch the coronavirus. <laughs> As I take this commercial break, I want you to know this is probably going to be part one (laughs) of this episode. (laughs) I'll be right back. I will be right back. But I really needed that laugh. Well, that's what the laugh line is all about on the Sister Speak Show. And the latest episode is available on demand now. Rated R for strong language and content. On this episode, we're covering Respect the Comedian, Was the Late Paul Mooney, the Black Sheep of Comedy, and Naturally Funny, Rapper Plies. On the laugh line, we cover all aspects of comedy, classic and contemporary comedy audio clips, special guest comedians, comedy show reviews. You will not be disappointed, and you will definitely get the healing that your soul needs on the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Click the link for the latest episode, and get ready to have a good time, because it's time to podcast and chill. Sis, we leave a week from today. Did you go online to KK Lachey and order your outfits? Because last time it was a cold girl summer for you. We can't have that happen this time. I'm just saying. I don't want you to be Keisha Killjoy because your outfits ain't popping. We got to get you right. The shade. I'm just keeping it real, you sis. The same summer, you had to drop it like it was warm because your knees were hurting. That's because I didn't stretch, sis. Anyways, I'm on KK Lachey right now. I just picked out my outfits. They're going to have me looking so good in Jamaica. I'm going to send you some screenshots. I got to get back to work. A look, a feel, a vibe. The people all pause when you walk into the room. Your KK Lachey apparel is popping. Your vacation is lit and you're ready to turn up. Get these looks and more at kklachey.com. Ooh, welcome back. You are listening to the Vent Session on the Sister Speak Show. I am your host, Sister Speak. It is 10.59 p.m. Central Standard Time, recording from Dallas, Texas. Brothers and sisters, I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. I don't know what you thought you were listening to. This is the Sister Speak Show. We keep it real. I'm, you ain't no telling what's going to come out of my mouth, but it's not going to be any. <laughs> Let me shut up. I was about to really probably ruin the show with that joke. (laughs) Let me be real. But actually, that's a great segue into what I was going to say. Listen, bottom feeders, check this in. Bottom feeders? Wait a minute. Where are we going? Wait, no. This is just roll with me. The women that know that these men are married, I'm talking to you whores. What else am I supposed to call you? Let's just be honest. What the fuck else am I supposed to call you? Jezebel, incubus succubus spirit, you whores. Because this is the knowing aspect of it. This isn't the, and hear me. When you put yourself in this position to say, I intentionally am here to wreck marriages. I prefer married men only. I like the thrill of it. We're talking about the ones who obviously low vibrate, vibrate low rather, and have unhealed trauma. Because at the genesis of everything, and this is serious, is the unhealed trauma. And that's why everybody's attracting everybody. Okay, and when you get to your therapist, if you put down your arrogance and your ego and your pride, and if you're literally ready to not be 
in the fuckery of life, then you will discover the root of why you are making the decisions that you make and why your life is literally on the front line for a major devastation because you are living out your childhood. And that's not the excuse. It's just the root. Because we're not going to stay at the car wreck. We're getting to the chiropractor. But many people will not go to therapy. Therefore, they will continue to leave crumbs. And you will continue to see him and her walking in the rain. And he will continue to walk in the rain with a different woman. Because he has issues that deal partly with his mother or he came from a high vibrating home and he's just wicked, period. Either way, they're both walking in the rain and you saw them and reality has set in. And now you're starting to understand why the Most High God says, trust no man. (laughs) No man. The Lord created these niggas. Excuse me. The Lord created these, these men who have chosen to act like niggas. Forgive me, Most High God. That's not how, what I meant to say. And He knows all about them. He knows what they're doing. Let's just put it like this. This is why you trust the Lord. Because when he leaves your house, the Lord can still see him. (laughs) You can't. Unless you're following him. And some of you do follow. Some of you have have staked out a house all night. Didn't know you were P.I., did you? Yeah. Some of you have been on stakeouts. You and your homegirl or you by yourself. Caught them coming out of a hotel room, caught them coming out of a house, caught them coming out of a car, caught them coming out of their homeboy's room. (laughs) Ooh, let's talk about it. Cheating does leave crumbs. And in these crumbs, you find out that your man likes men. Also, it's the same sex energy. And because the, the balance is off, the energies are off. He's dibbling and dabbling in things and you had no idea. Or she is dibbling and dabbling in things and you had no idea. And when you catch somebody from the opposite sex, that's one emotion. But I've never taken a class that prepared me for for what to do when I catch him with the same sex. So, excuse me, the effects are are different different on the Richter scale the 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 size of the earthquake is totally different the fault line everything this entire earthquake here is different than the magnitude of catching you with someone from the opposite sex it is almost i don't i hate to use this word but it is it is common when you assume It is common to assume that the other party is the opposite sex. That's just not the case all the time. And your secret phone life has evidence that you are in some same sex entanglements. But you're telling people that you only deal with the opposite sex. That is confusion and chaos, which does lead it to calamities. I don't, I know whoever you are, you're not ready and you cannot handle all of these spirits coming at you and preying upon you at once when it backfires. And when you are sexually active, What do you think is going to happen with the emotions of the people you're involved with? And if you're involved with somebody of the same sex, they are possessing a feminine energy. So what do you think the outcome is going to be? A lot of emotional fuckery. And he is going to expose you. Prepare yourself. 
Some of you have already been exposed. And some of you, when you get exposed, you want to kill the person who has exposed you instead of killing the energies that have you vibrating so fucking low in the first place. Speak, sister, speak. That's real. That's real talk. What do you think is going to be the outcome of you sharing yourself deceptively with multiple people who believe that they are the only one that you are dealing with for the most part? And then for the sneaky links, the adulteries, you are putting yourself in the position to make the news in any other crime-solving documentary show. You put yourself in that position. You don't want to get caught being a fuckboy. If you don't want to get caught being a fuckboy, then you obviously know that being a fuckboy ain't right. So what's up? You're discombobulated. Your thinking process is constipated. The thoughts don't process through. You need to take a shit and get all of that shit out of you. You're backed up. You, you, you have 15 years of shit in you that you need to defecate. Let loose. When you get caught, are you prepared For whatever the fuck is going to come. No you're not. Because all you give a fuck about. Is getting your penis sucked. And letting semen ejaculate from you. That's all the fuck you care about. You care about the addiction. To cheating. The sex addictions. And if you heal the sex addictions. You will find yourself not vibrating as low. And making the decisions that you have made. That create crumbs. You play too many games and you need to stop playing games with me, with them, with us, with yourself and before us with the most high. What are you going to do? Just stand on the corner and say being a whore is my calling. How long are you going to continue skeet, skeet, skeeting all throughout fucking town? And for you females to say, well, if the wife was handling her business at home, he wouldn't be creeping. No, if the nigga was handling his business and going to a therapy, he wouldn't be creeping. You look just because you will let a nigga skeet in your eye. That ain't got shit to do with me. Sister speak. I said it. I mean that shit. Some of you think because you bust it wide open and let a nigga defile you that some way you got the one up on the wife who chooses not to be a porn whore. Who, dis- who, who knows that she doesn't need to defile the marriage bed because she's full of intimacy and grace. Because she's full of a level of sexuality that you a sexual spirituality that you don't even embrace. But because you let this nigga shit on your face, it, you for some reason think you got the upper hand because he's coming over to your house to shit on your face. You gave yourself an award for what again? You're clapping for yourself for what again? You think you doing something for what again? Well, I'm just saying though, you're the no, you're the cleanup woman. But he's still a fucking mess. So what the fuck are you cleaning up? And you're not doing a good job as the cleanup woman. Don't, don't, you don't want this work. I am the one. I am keeping it 100. You need to stop saying if she was handling her business, he would have never left. Maybe if you hadn't have been in their marriage and, and, and caused problems for them and, and been in your place as an in-law, maybe he would not have been susceptible to cheating. Maybe if some of you all would stop playing with dark magic, spell work, and voodoo and sending that shit towards marriages, trying to break them up, maybe then he wouldn't cheat. Some of you men are cheating because people have put spells on you. There are levels to these crumbs. 
Talk about it, sister speak. Some of you are really a good guy doing bad things because shit has been sent your way and you are in trouble because there is somebody who does not want to see you and your wife happy because you're a divine couple, a power couple. There are people who are not happy to see you together and they will send shit your way. And next thing you know, you hate your spouse. You're not sexually attracted to your spouse. You can't stand your fucking spouse. You don't want every little fucking thing they do. You you got a problem with it. And you used to love this man, this woman. But now you can't even be in the same room and you can't put a finger on it. But you know something ain't off. And you're dealing with relatives, whether it be from your side or their side, that are sending shit your way. Because they have an incestuous obsession with either you or him or both of you. It is a, these are true stories. Sometimes people will pay for you to go into conflict and you will think that you need an outlet because your wife doesn't get it or your husband doesn't get it. That's that bullshit. That's that dark magic. I will expose it. Satan, you know I don't play these fucking games. Fuck you for everything that you do to my people in the village. How you seek, kill, and destroy. How you devastate homes and lives and tribes and unions. How you go around because you got kicked out of heaven fucking up people's lives. And you work through people because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And you cause chaos and calamity. I will expose you because that's what the light does. It exposes darkness. Beelzebub. Gonna get this work today. So at the beginning of the day, it's not about if she would have been handling her business. Then he wouldn't have come this way. No. Fish. Bait. So why is it that your fish took the bait? Maybe you need to go get some Yanni. Some Yanni, some Yanni popping off. You need a spiritual cleansing, sis, because being the mistress ain't where it's at. Being the side hoe ain't where it's at. This nigga's lying to you, himself, and her. It's a whole bunch of fuckery that's going to end in somebody either being killed spiritually or physically or both. Because you want him for yourself now. And you're willing to even have this man's baby to try to get him to leave who he was supposed to be with. There are a lot of people who are not in union that should be reconciling, but they can't because of the dark magic, because of the crumbs, because of the after effects. Some of you men who are married, who left your wives, who cheated on your wives, you know you fucked up. It ain't been cool for you. You can try to pretend like it looks good. You can try to pretend like you happy. You can smile as in in, as in many. You can smile in as many pictures as you want to. The truth is the Lord knows the truth and you're not happy And you are experiencing tower after tower after tower and you deserve it until you change. And some of you niggas won't change until you go through some dark fucking times. And the Lord will separate a married couple in order for whoever the one is to get it, whether it be both or one. And for you people who like to break up relationships and create situations for these crumbs to occur. Woe unto you. So just understand. Just because he skeets on your face doesn't mean you're the better woman. Just because he defiles you does not mean you're the better woman. Just because he sneaks to call you doesn't make you the better woman. You are nothing but a prop in the major objective of what's getting ready to happen. Because I would never want to be proud that I'm sneaking around with a man 
that defiles me sexually and tells you and talks all kind of shit about his wife and his wife is totally opposite of everything that you that he smears about her and you believe the smear campaign and you husbands come home after being a whore a gargamel a skeletor a fuck boy and then you treat your wife like shit or you try to be a con artist to bring home some flowers fresh out the shower acting all giddy and weird as fuck because you know you're guilty you're going to either be abusive when you come home or elusive camouflaging the fuckery and then you give her weak dick your wife And then you blame her for the reason that the sexual chemistry is not there. Let me explain something to you. Once we know that you're cheating, we don't want to fuck you. We don't want to lay with you. We don't want to kiss you, hug you, smell you, feel you, cook for you, do shit for you, nigga. That's real shit. But you won't tell your people that. You won't tell the barbershop that. You talk shit, but you won't tell them the reason why there's problems. It's because you are the reason. Or she is the reason. Either way. However it resonates. So if you want to know why the sex went from being wonderful to what the fuck. It's because we are emotional. And it's really hard to lay with the man. After we have discovered that you've been fucking other women. And we're married to you. So that's why. That's why everything is half ass in the house. Nigga, we're wounded. What the fuck do you think is happening? We're wounded. We're aware that you're out here doing the least, thinking you're doing the most, living your worst life when you think you're living your best life. We have intuition. We have dreams and downloads. And we are sitting here trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. You don't know how long we've known. Bucko. That's why everything is off. That's why she has lost the glow in her eyes. Because you're an asshole, a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, a deceiver. And she's been faithful to you the entire time. And you project your adultery onto her. How do I know you ain't out here cheating? Motherfucker, because you're always outside. You would catch me. Nigga, if you would stay home, you would see. I'm the house, you out the house. Why is my phone ringing? Hold on. So when you put yourself in this position, brothers, this is, and I had to pause because my phone rang. I apologize for that. But, and that took me, oh, the devil. You won't be able to do it this time. When I'm half-assed doing something, it's because I'm not feeling you anymore. I want you married men to get this. This is why. She's acting different. She knows what's up. She knows that you've been out here misleading. You've been out here giving the love that she wants to another woman. And you expect her to be wet, wet for you. That's why she doesn't want to kiss you in the mouth, look you in the eyes. She won't have shit to do with you. But it's hard for her to unlearn you. She doesn't want to start over. She doesn't want to get to know another man. She genuinely loved you. And you looked her basically in the eyes and said, Keisha, you already know what it is with your actions. And you'll go crazy if she cheats on you. You'll fucking lose your mind. So what do you think's happening to her? Whether you're cheat, I'm. You know, I'm just not getting what I'm supposed to get at home, and you know, you know, just emotionally, you guys sit on the phone 
on text messages, online, through emails, and you tell a whole bunch of fucking lies about your woman to the other woman. And you talk, excuse me, major shit about your woman to the other woman. And you make up this whole scenario just for some pussy. And you have in-house. Well, you know, it's just not the same. Stop fucking watching porn, horn dog. Bring it on down, octopus penis. You're out of control. And you want her to be a part of your masturbation chronicles. Look, bucko. That ain't natural. That's defiling. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I got needs and, you know, I'm looking to have a threesome and she don't want to have some. And why the fuck should she? Why should she want to get in bed with you and another female? Why the fuck do you have that fantasy in the first place? Oh, I don't know. It's just, no, it's the porn, brother. It's the porn. It's the trauma. It's the addiction. It's the therapy. That's the only way you're going to come out that shit. Because you're putting pressure on her to be you. And you don't need to be you. And then you go and you you, you, you search for your trauma in other women. And you exact your trauma onto other women. You leave crumbs. I feel like I've never been married. What, sister speak? I feel like I've never been married. What I envisioned and what I expected versus what I got and what I experienced, I could write a book. This is real shit. No one has time when they are committed to have to discover that the person who they believed, who told them, who who created such a scenario to discover that they're living a whole nother secret life on their phone and online. And they cheat through emails and text messages and photos. And then when you catch them, when you catch them, some of them flip it on you and it's your fault. She's crazy. He's crazy. Hold on, let me get this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My feet. We ain't having this today. There we go. Okay. And you put you you put him or her in the position. Do I confront the bitch? Do, what do I, now, you know, this is what leads to domestic violence. This is what leads to saying some of the most, some, some of, we all know that we can say some things that we ain't, you know, we ain't supposed to say, but hey, when you fight and you fight and you say, it can, it can be real. The police come into the house, all kind of shit, but it was you that was cheating. That's why I say I've never feel like I, I've been married before. Fuck no. There's no way that I could ever describe anything unless it's that. So I am excited about being married for the first time in my life. I know it's coming. And I know that there are good men out there. There are men out there that do not cheat. There are men out there that are faithful. There are men out there that protect and serve seriously. There are great men out there. And I thank you for being alive and existing. Thank you, Lord, for creating great men, good men, solid men, true men. But yeah, I've never been married before. Let that sink into your bosom. Sister speak, I mean that shit. I survived out of chaos, deception, manipulation, Lies, cheating, witchcraft, voodoo, black magic. I am not 
my where I'm at in life, I'm not going to be going through discovery of evidence that should not exist. Mm. And I want to eat around somebody who if they do leave crumbs, they know how to clean their crumbs up. Mm. So you're saying, Sister Speak, that as long as he cleans up the crumbs and there's no evidence, you'll accept the cheating? No, what I'm saying is I want to eat with a man who knows how to eat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't mean nothing by that. I just, it's all good. I'm just saying. So when it comes to your secret life, it's not a secret because the person you're fucking with knows. How is that a secret? Do you really think they're going to pinky swear with you and be like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything? Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. Pull back your energy and watch the Decepticon crumble. The Decepticon has a date that he or she will crumble. They will start to slip. Your intuition is not off, but don't mix your low vibrating insecurities from unhealed childhood traumas With your intuition. Be able to discern between the two. So you won't go around accusing a man of cheating when he really isn't. That's why I said heal so you don't project. I'm serious about this. Not all men cheat. Not all women cheat. Cheaters do leave crumbs. Stop playing games with me. This is part one. I know you're like, that was a long ass pause. This is part one of stop playing games with me. I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to pick up next, not next week. I'm going to record tomorrow. This, I got about five episodes in queue for y'all. Good episodes. I just like my production quality to be at a level that is satisfactory. And I want to make sure that I have all the research and everything that I need. I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right here. You got enough information from me and enough encouragement, enough laugh, excuse me, enough humor, and just the entire gamut and buffet. You got it from me this evening. I'm putting in my work for you, brothers and sisters, because I care. Now, I do have to say this. This is on, on my way out. Feel me on this. Right now, you may be at a level where you don't feel as if you can handle the betrayal or the adultery. And the suggestions are low vibrating. Some of the suggestions are for you to take yourself out of this world. The devil is telling you that you can't live without him or her. That you are nothing without him or her. That he or she made you. That there is nobody else for you. And these lies are starting to become your reality. The devil is telling you don't don't eat, don't sleep, excuse me, don't rest, don't shower, don't groom. Show your pain. Show 
how I'm devastating you. Show how I'm destroying you. Let me see the works that I have projected. I want to see it. And then here you are displaying your countenance before the world, showing the world that it was able to dominate you through the circumstance, through him or through her. Be honest with yourself. If you like bad boys, you're going to get bad things. If you like bad girls, you're going to get bad things. If you like drama and chaos, and you're the type of human that does not want a human that vibrates high and the only way that you feel like you can function is low vibrating energy then you deserve everything that you are getting until you want otherwise you will continue to attract the felonies and the misdemeanors the infractions the probations and the paroles The streets and everything that comes with the gutter. Because that's what you said that you wanted. And now... You are in pain because of the betrayal or the adultery. And you're questioning yourself of how you didn't see it, catch it, or why you didn't walk away. And that is why I say you have to go get therapy and heal. So you can be pre-qualified for righteous love. It exists, but it's hidden because you're not ready. It's the low-hanging fruit that you keep eating and desiring. What the fuck do you expect from low-hanging fruit? I don't give a fuck how good looking he or she is or isn't. It's the energy that you need to be adding to the list and it needs to be at the top. The devil is beautiful. He's not ugly. And in a superficial world, it is easy To find crumbs. He has to be more than fine. The dick has to be more than just fire. It has to be more to this man than some good dick. You men ought to want want to be more than just some good dick. Some good pussy. You ought to want to be more than just that. Oh, I can't leave her, man. She got some good pussy. Brother, she hit you in the head with a brick, but she got some good pussy, though. Nigga. Girl, I can't leave him. That dick is too good. But he beat you in the forehead with it and then pushed you down the stairs. I know, but the dick is good. Nigga. But the dick is good. But the pussy is good. It's the reason why you found crumbs. And it's the reason why you leave crumbs. I 
I think it's time that you get up and get something to eat. And it's time for you to wash your ass. Because no nigga or female should ever back you into a corner to where you ain't washing your ass. keep letting him back in I keep letting her back in break the cycle at least you you know what you know what you're doing stop but my kids stop using your kids as a pawn stop using your children as a pawn in this Your secret life has already been exposed. There will be a day and you're going to have to make a decision. To have a toe tag because of dishonesty, manipulation, deceit, betrayal, You can hurt somebody so bad that you scorn them to where they see red and then they end up blacking out and doing something out of character because they never thought that you would leave crumbs because you said you wouldn't. And that's how the fuckery begins. You said you wouldn't leave crumbs. And you did. And you left crumbs in the bed. On the floor. In the car. On your phone. In your emails. In your galleries. In your underwear. On your credit card on your passport, in the office, at the meeting, at your homeboy's house, your homegirl's house. And when you cover for your homeboy or your homegirl, for that married man or married woman, and you are the one who is making sure that the fuckery can happen, you also receive the karma of the adulterer as well. Some of you are in friend groups and you have dirty secrets, scandalous secrets, crummy secrets. You know that there is adultery going on and you hang out with all parties involved and you don't say shit, but you know about it. Guilty by association and you can't escape that. Crumb snatcher. Until you do the work, you'll end up getting worked. I want you to have genuine love. I want genuine love. But there are prerequisites spiritually that we must follow. And as long as we are fornicating... Recklessly. There will always be crumbs. And punishment. 
Stop playing games with me. Cheating leaves crumbs. Secret lies on the phone and online. Part one. You've been a wonderful listening audience. I am Sister Speak. I return to sender all negative energy, all demonic energy, all satanic energy, all black magic, all voodoo, all spell work, all judo, all evil eyes. I mirror it back into your bosom a hundredfold and it has an adverse effect immediately in your bosom. I play no games. You're not welcome in my energy field. You're not welcome in my listening audience's energy field. I'm with the shit all day in a good way. I'm a warrior and I decided to take my pain and turn it into power. And I realized a lot about me, about me. No blame shifting, me. Associating what I needed to associate and identify, but I am doing the work. For me. And I want you to say the same. I want you to say the same. You've been a wonderful divine listening audience. Until we converse next time. You have a wonderful night. Sleep well. Excuse me. Rest well. Take you a nice spiritual cleansing shower. Put on some high vibrating meditating music. And allow yourself to vibrate high. So you can no longer leave crumbs. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. My listening audience is divinely protected, and so am I. Warriors, mount up. It's a thin line between love and hate.